Perhaps two of the most significant and remarkable events in the Prophet peace be upon him's life were his Isra, night journey, at Mi'raj, ascension. Isra refers to how one night Allah took Muhammad, peace be upon him, from the Kaaba to Bayt al-Maqdis, the sacred mosque of worship, i.e. Solomon's temple, in Jerusalem. And Miraj refers to the Prophet's, peace be upon him's, actual ascension to heaven from Jerusalem. The Prophet, peace be upon him's, Isra, is mentioned in the Quran in the following verse. Glory to Allah, who took his slave on a journey by night from the sacred mosque to the farthest mosque, whose precincts I did bless, in order that I might show him some of my signs. Verily, Allah hears and sees all things. Quran 17, colon 1. Some sources indicate that the Mi'raj is also described in Surah Al-Najm, from the 7th to the 18th verse. There's a difference of opinion concerning when the Isra and Mi'raj occurred. Some sources place the event in the first year of prophethood, while others place it in the fifth year. Other sources indicate that it took place on Rajab 27, during the 10th year of prophethood, or Ramadan 17th, during the 12th year of prophethood, or in Muharram, or Rabil Awal, in the 13th year of prophethood. The story of the Prophet, peace be upon him's night journey and ascension, is both beautiful and instructive. It began when the angel Jibreel, peace be upon him, descended on the Kaaba with a burak, an animal bigger than an ass and smaller than a donkey, that could travel to the farthest horizon with one stride. The Prophet, peace be upon him, and Jibreel, peace be upon him, rode the Burak to the sacred mosque of worship in Jerusalem. Once there, the Prophet, peace be upon him, tethered the animal outside the mosque where former prophets had tied their mounts. The Prophet, peace be upon him, entered the mosque to find assembled there all the previous prophets, whom he then led in prayer. Jibreel, peace be upon him, brought two vessels to the Prophet, one filled with wine, the other with milk. The Prophet, peace be upon him, chose the second vessel. Jibreel, peace be upon him, commented on the Prophet, peace be upon him's choice. You chose milk in accordance with the purity of your nature. Hence, you have received guidance and your followers have too. Had you chosen wine, your followers would have been astray. The Prophet, peace be upon him, was then taken to the first level of heaven, which was the first stage of his ascension. Jibreel, peace be upon him, asked for the door to be opened for the Prophet, peace be upon him. And there stood Adam, peace be upon him, the first man and prophet. Adam, peace be upon him, said, Peace be upon you, to which the Prophet, peace be upon him, responded, And upon you be peace. Adam, peace be upon him, then testified that Muhammad, peace be upon him, was a prophet of Allah. Adam, peace be upon him, looked to his right and smiled and then looked to his left and wept. The Prophet, peace be upon him, saw two groups of people on either side of Adam, and the ones he smiled at were the believers, while the ones that caused him to weep were unbelievers. The Prophet was then escorted to the second level of heaven. Jibreel, peace be upon him, asked for the door to be opened, and there the Prophet, peace be upon him, saw two cousins, the Prophet Yahya bin Zakriya, John son of Zechariah, and Isa bin Maryam, Jesus, son of Mary, peace be upon him. The Prophet, peace be upon him, greeted them, and they returned the greeting, and then they testified that Muhammad, peace be upon him, was Allah's Prophet. On the third level of heaven, the Prophet, peace be upon him, met Yusuf, peace be upon him, Joseph. After an exchange of greetings, Yusuf, peace be upon him, also testified that Muhammad, peace be upon him, was Allah's Prophet. The Prophet, peace be upon him, met Idris, peace be upon him, on the fourth level of heaven. Both prophets exchanged greetings and Idris testified that Muhammad, peace be upon him, was prophet of Allah. The fifth level of heaven was where the prophet, peace be upon him, met Harun, peace be upon him, who, like all the previous prophets, exchanged greetings and testified that Muhammad, peace be upon him, was Allah's prophet. Musa, Moses, peace be upon him, awaited the prophet, peace be upon him, on the sixth level of heaven. After greeting the Prophet, peace be upon him, and testifying that Muhammad, peace be upon him, was indeed a prophet, Musa, peace be upon him, began to weep. When he was asked why he was weeping, he said, 
The reason for my tears is that a youth was commissioned as prophet after me, but his followers will enter heaven in greater numbers than mine. When the prophet, peace be upon him, reached the seventh level of heaven, he met Ibrahim, peace be upon him, resting against Betul Mamur, a celestial house of worship which 70,000 different angels circumambulate every day. The prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, returned the greeting of his descendant and testified that Muhammad, peace be upon him, was the prophet of Allah. At this point, the prophet, peace be upon him, was then led up to Sidratul Muntaha, a tree of paradise. Its leaves were the size of elephants' ears and its fruits the size of small pitchers. It was covered by golden moths and no words can describe its beauty. The Prophet, peace be upon him, was then taken before Allah the Almighty. Since no human eyes could take in the majesty of Allah, the Prophet, peace be upon him, could not actually look upon Allah, but he stood in close proximity to him. Allah informed the Prophet that it was now obligatory for his followers to perform prayers 50 times a day. The Prophet, peace be upon him, was then led away by Jibreel, peace be upon him. Musa, peace be upon him, however, halted the Prophet and asked him what Allah had commanded. 50 prayers a day, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said. Your followers are not strong enough. Go back to your Lord and ask him to make it lighter, Musa, peace be upon him, advised. The Prophet, peace be upon him, looked at Jibreel, peace be upon him, who said, You may do so if you so desire. The Prophet, peace be upon him, returned to Allah and did as he had been advised. Allah reduced the obligatory number of prayers from 50 to 10. Again, the Prophet, peace be upon him, was led away and once again, Musa, peace be upon him, stopped him. Upon hearing that the number had been reduced to 10, he advised the Prophet, peace be upon him, to ask for another reduction. Allah reduced the number to five. When Musa, peace be upon him, learned of this, he again advised the Prophet, peace be upon him, to ask Allah to reduce the number. The children of Israel, Musa, peace be upon him, said, were asked to do less, but still they were unable to carry out their duties. The Prophet, peace be upon him, did not intend to return another time. I feel ashamed before my Lord, he peace be upon him said. A voice then announced, I have enforced my obligation and made it light for my servants. He who prays these five prayers will be rewarded as if he had prayed fifty. What I decree cannot be changed. The Prophet, peace be upon him, then returned to Makkah before dawn and the next morning he told the people about his miraculous journey and ascension to heaven. The Makkan pagans, of course, scoffed at his claim. Some ran to Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him, and told him the story, thinking that it would shake his faith in the Prophet, peace be upon him. If he said so, Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him, said, it must be true. Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him's answer as to why he believed is inspiring to all generations of Muslims. Since he had believed the Prophet was indeed a prophet, one to whom an angel brought revelations from Allah, Lord of the worlds, why should he not also believe the Prophet, peace be upon him's account of his travel through space and time? From that day onward, Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him, was called Siddiq, one who believes. In an attempt to prove that Muhammad, peace be upon him, was lying, those Makkans who were familiar with Jerusalem and the sacred mosque of worship there quizzed him about his journey. The Prophet, peace be upon him, described everything in detail and no one could fault his description. Additionally, the Prophet, peace be upon him, told the Makkans about a caravan travelling from Jerusalem to Makkah, mentioning the number of camels, their condition, and the time that they would arrive in Makkah. The caravan from Jerusalem appeared exactly when the Prophet, peace be upon him, said it would, and everyone saw that his description was accurate, but the pagans remained fettered to their disbelief. The same morning, Jibreel, peace be upon him, descended and taught the Prophet, peace be upon him, how to perform the five daily prayers. Following Jibreel, peace be upon him's visit, the Muslims began praying five times each day instead of praying morning and evening. Various tribes are invited to Islam. Once again, it was time for the Prophet, peace be upon him, to take Allah's message to the people outside Makkah. 
tribes from all over Arabia would journey to Ukaz, Mujana and Dhulmajaz, where three huge fairs were held each year. The fair at Ukaz, a village between Nakhla and Taif, lasted the first 20 days of the month of Dhul Qadha. Then the tribes would move to Mujana and set up markets there. Finally, during the first days of Dhul Hijjah, markets were set up in Dhul Majaz, behind Jabal Rahma on the plain of Arafah. The people would perform the Hajj or pilgrimage rites following the last fair. Taking the opportunity of finding a large audience, the Prophet, peace be upon him, approached various tribes with his message of Allah's oneness and his own prophethood. Those invited to Islam were Banu Amir bin Sasa, Banu Fazara, Ghassan, Murra, Banu Hanifa, Banu Sulaim, Banu Abs, Banu Nasar, Banu al Bakah, Kinda, Kalb, Banu al Harith bin Kaab, Udra, and Hadama. None of these tribes accepted the Prophet, peace be upon him's invitation, but they responded in different ways. Some of them declined politely, some asked him to appoint them as his successors after his death, some pointed out that most of the Prophet, peace be upon him's kinsmen and tribesmen, had refused to follow him, and some resorted to insults. Banu Hanifa, the tribe of Musaylima al Khadab or Musaylima the liar, who was later to pose as a prophet himself, was especially disrespectful to the Prophet, peace be upon him. 